morning. So today's video is about how to become a counsellor if that's the field that you're interested in and here's how I did it and hopefully that can help. If you like this video please subscribe, I put videos out every Sunday night. Hi, so like I said today's video is on how to become a counsellor. There are quite a few different routes and what I do want to say first is there is currently no UK law that states that you have to have this qualification or that qualification or this degree or that certificate to practice as a counsellor. It really really sucks. It's it's so unsafe. It's I don't understand how it's not in place but there is no law that so basically you could do a course tomorrow and be counselling or you could not even do a course and call yourself a counsellor and be doing it. There's nothing in place to stop you. Obviously if you counsel someone and something goes wrong there are governing bodies that can protect the client and they can kind of go through courts and sue and stuff like that but there is no actual law to stop people doing it in the first place which is like I said it sucks. So I will just tell you my route. Like I said, there are different routes to doing it and it's up to you what you find best and obviously what discipline you want to go through. But yes, hopefully this will help. So a bit of background on me, I did a undergraduate degree at Staffordshire University in psychology and counselling. I've known, oh, I'd say probably since I was 12 or 13, so there's a fly going around, that I wanted to be a counsellor. So I've kind of, it's been very driven into my head and that is where I'm going and there's no other path to come off from that, that is just my, my aim in life. So yeah, so since 13 I'd say I wanted to do it, so I, as soon as I, I did at college psychology because that's the closest thing you can get along with a couple of other stuff and like I said I did my undergraduate in psychology and counselling because again I don't think undergraduate level there is a straight counselling. Um, I know there are mini courses, there are different diplomas and stuff like that, but I think at the time that was just the route that was only in my head, there was no other options, so that is what I did. Maybe I could have done m smaller courses that weren't three years earlier, but for me this worked. After that I did, I did my Masters at University of Derby, um, MSc in Integrative Psychotherapy and Counselling. And that again was another three years. So all my degrees all together were six years, so three years each. That's because the master's was a certificate and then a diploma and then a master's. So you could have come out at any level, but the actual course as a whole was accredited if you did the three years. And I wanted to be, in my head, being accredited was the best thing to be. So I went with the whole three years and that was the highest tier that you could have. Apart from doctorates and items like that, the MSc was the highest level I could get. Don't get me wrong, I, I, like I said, to be a, let's say, a, as much lawfully person as you can be would be to do these courses, but I don't think doing a course makes someone a good counsellor at all. I 100% believe it's the person, the individual, how you bond with clients, how clients bond with you, and you could do a thousand masters or a thousand doctorates, doesn't mean you're actually a better counsellor, doesn't mean you're actually a nicer person. It's all about the inner person. So something to consider. Don't think, oh, if I do these degrees, I will suddenly be a great counsellor. Reflect and look at yourself and think, am I actually a nice person? Do I come across well? And kind of personality traits and stuff like that. So, but yes, I just wanted to put that in there. So just because you do degrees doesn't mean you're any better or worse than people haven't done or have done doctorates or certificates or diplomas or mini courses. It's all, it's all um, helpful, 100%. So take what you need to from this and do what you need to. So that was my things. I did them degrees. While I was doing my master's degree, I had placements, therefore I was practicing, which you will tend to have to do for degrees. I don't know if it's the same for courses. When I say courses, I mean certificates and diplomas and mini training sessions I have a feeling it would be because that's how you learn by practicing and having clients you know is you can't just do all the university work and paperwork and actually be seeing people and connecting with people so that's what I did and that to me was the best route I could go along there are different certificates there are different diplomas so the levels are certificate diploma and then higher so I don't know I don't think clients care, I don't think 
I've never had or someone's told me that I can't just ask to see their um, proof of documentation that they've done courses. I think 100% if you are a client looking for a counsellor, you have that right and there's no reason at all a counsellor should not have that information to give to you and show you because that is your right to make sure because like I said there's no law in place to stop people from doing it so if you have any doubts or any worries or just want to ask then ask but from a counsellor's side I don't know of any clients that have asked because I imagine it's quite an awkward thing it's like if you went to a dentist you, you expect that they're qualified but you've never asked the dentist if they are it's with everything if a policeman comes in you don't normally ask for id you just expect that they're a policeman so have your guard up but you do have that right to ask and as a counselor you should show that and prove it so i don't think to clients it tends to matter what level you have because like i said i think it is a it's knowledge but it's also a user person and connecting with your user person that is more important than that side of stuff in the moment but having that knowledge is what builds the foundations and keeps therapy going and being actually successful rather than just chatting. So yes, I can't think what else to say. There are, I think I've spoke about in my other videos, there are governing bodies. So again, as a client, you can ask who they are a member of because this is more in place than, like I said, a law. Most people are attached to a governing body. So someone that would protect them if there's any complaints or they have um, kind of community to go to and different sides like that and it's I don't know what else they really do it's it's ethical guidelines and having someone there to support us but also to support you if something goes wrong so there are different ones there are probably about three I'm trying to think of what they are there's the BACP which is the British Association for Cancer and Psychotherapy who I'm a member of so you do have a right to ask again and every council should be a member to protect themselves and protect the client. So yeah, it's up to you what you want to do. There are many courses I have seen on quite a few forums at the minute, the kind of shock of seeing there are um, online courses to become councillors that are like a few months thing which just paperwork based and there's no kind of, there's no structure there and it's just you do it and then you're a councillor and it's like, oh, you're messing with people's like lives here and it. You can't, you can't just have that and just have a, 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 a random course that hasn't actually taught you anything. So please do your research, make sure that you feel comfortable with the course that you're going to do and the course has some kind of body behind it or some kind of accreditation or something to make sure it's a good course to be on and make sure you safe and makes the client safe because that's the most important thing. Make sure you do what you want to do and please be safe. Any questions on my degrees or anything, please ask and I will see you next time. Thank you.